All right, today we're gonna to talk about year two fail of no-till drilling over here at Penders Creek uh, on Hunter Works Outdoors YouTube channel. For the past couple of months, I've been videoing all these different steps and to get us back to where we are today for try number two. And while I was uh, getting ready to, to make the ending video, I decided to scrap all of it because anybody with equipment did not need to know how to bush hog disc, etc. So I'm gonna try to briefly, and I say briefly, try to stick with me to the end here, because I'm trying to save you some money and some time and certainly some aggravation that uh, Hunter and I have had to deal with the past year on trying to get our food plot started on a no-till drill rotation. The problem with videos out there today is most of them, there's, there's two versions. And, and both of them are not good in my opinion. One version is that some guy goes and rents, borrows a, a no-till drill, doesn't know what he's doing, throws something out there and does a comparison to, to something else. And, and it's you know a, a very bad outcome. Well, he just didn't do it right. The second thing is, is everything's beautiful and lovely and the person's soil is great and they got worms, they don't have compaction, and they got deer with racks like this, everything's lovely. And you get sold into it like I did. You go buy a Great Plains 606 NT for 18 grand, which by the way, the equipment we're using is our Kubota MX6000 and again, Great Plains 606 NT. Uh, and you think you'll never have to buy fertilizer again, herbicide again, etc. You'll start no-till in your fields and everything's gonna be lovely. So last year, uh, we pre prepared this same exact seed bed, all traditional methods. Um, we disc, tilled, section haired, I think we cultipacked, uh, put some fertilizer out. Uh, we didn't get a soil sample, we didn't put lime out and we used our brand new drill last year and drilled our fall food plots. I will say fall food plots, far as the planting side, went fast as ever, and they come up great and looked great. Uh, looked pretty good, we'll say that for the amount of fertilizer I had, I didn't have enough. All right, however, I had to use however many pieces of equipment that was, six or seven pieces of equipment and time to get it started to get a, a nice bed because what was here before, you wouldn't have wanted to just no-till drill, I, I assure you. Kind of looked like that over there. All right, and while you're looking, yeah, we now have uh, sprinklers in our deer field at this location because about 300 feet away is a well and, and it was no big deal to get a pump and put five sprinklers down through here. So that's a plus. So <clears throat> our fall food plot, went as we planned it because we knew starting out we got to prepare it like old times. From then on out I thought I was done with fertilizer, herbicide, doing any of that and plowing ever again. Wrong. When it come time for spring uh, I come in here to try to crimp our cereal rye and oats. Oats doesn't crimp and I didn't plant enough cereal rye plus it looked poor and it really didn't accomplish anything. I was able to plant green our summer food plot this year. I believe it was a mixture of summer blend from Green Clover Company, I believe is the name of it. And right after I planted it, Mother Nature, you know, she loves me. She cut the rain off. And so the lack of rain and really the lack of fertilizer, it was a, a very bad job. And so I'll be honest with you, I was just very, Disappointed in myself, disappointed in, in, in how no-till drilling worked for me. Again, you know, a lot of these videos out there are just are showing you three, four years into the process. So here we are, year two. Hopefully we can correct this. And, and if you stuck with me this far, this is where it helps you. Is this either you're considering no-till drilling or you have one and you just bought it and you're just out here on YouTube looking for people with some experience with it. My experience is not great but I'm also catching you at a time just ahead of where you are and to let you know some of the shortcomings. So do get your soil samples done. Do fertilize to exactly what it says. Lime to exactly what it says. And we did that this year. So we came in here, uh, sprayed herbicide, killed everything. Uh, then we bush hogged it. 
and, and then that's when we applied our lime and our fertilizer. We disc it, we tilled it, and then we section haired it. All these steps that I hate doing because we got 300 acres here and we got better things to do than spend all this time over here. But that's what I did. I did not uh, cult the packet this year, and, uh, but I did all these steps to get us right back to where we are today and we are planting our final field uh, with our cereal, rye, and our oats. And so since we have enough fertilizer, our lime is correct, which it does take a while to, you know, for it to actually act. And I'm hopeful that by springtime, which is more important to me, planting our summer crop, that it'll be working for us. Uh, we'll come back in here in the spring. Uh, we will plant green, as they call it. We'll, our cereal rye and oats will still be green. We'll plant our spring summer crop and then what I'm going to do different, I'm not using that crimper uh, this time, may do it again in the future, but I have a sickle bar mold and some people disagree with it, but I'm going to give it a try and because that oak didn't want to lay down and I'm going to come in here and cut that stuff down right on top of the ground after I plant and I might get a soil sample and get some more fertilizer down because unfortunately, uh, I think that's the key to getting this going is getting that ground good if it's not and then start letting these plants that we're planting spring and fall, keeping something in the ground, pulling carbon and nitrogen out of the air and putting it in the ground and keep from turning our soil and turning it into concrete. So the gist of it is, is that just don't be suckered in kind of like I did that you can go out and buy a no-till drill, start the process and never look back and, and your whole life is, is lovely. I, I think we'll get to that point, but it won't be in the first two or three years. I am hoping that this year two is the last year I have to disc and till and section hair. I'm hoping from here on out for the next two or three years, simply uh, maybe some herbicide and some fertilizer. And of course here in this particular field where I have water, water when necessary and can get this cycle going. And then by year three, four, five, then the herbicide and the uh, fertilizer will be at a minimum. But I would highly recommend every year do a soil test and until you get that soil stabilized where you want it. So uh, like I said, I had planned, I had pictures and videos and talking. You heard me talking up with bush hogging and all that good stuff. But last day on the job, I decided to cut it short. If you got farm equipment, you don't need to see me doing all that. You already know how to do it. So uh, as we go out here at the end, I'll give you a little footage of me running our no-till drill. And uh, we'll see you back in the spring to see how successful we were with our food plot. I um, can tell you, right over my shoulder, uh, been a nice buck come out. He's on our hit list for this year, so hopefully we'll get a chance to give him a, uh, get a shot at him. But uh, anyway, got any comments, questions, put them down below. Make sure you subscribe, like, and I uh, hope you look forward to more of Hunter and I's Hunter Works Outdoor videos.